Hello, welcome to my talk on a comparison of Newton's and Leibniz's calculus. In here, I will use an example to see what are the differences between the Newton's calculus and the Leibniz's calculus. In this talk, I will make a brief comparison for Newton's calculus and Leibniz's calculus. I will use an example for the area of a quadrant of a circle using Newton's method, and for the same area using the Leibniz method. And we will see two different pi series from the same example would be obtained in this talk. We first compare what are the difference between the Newton's differential calculus and the Leibniz differential calculus. Here, we are not talking too much about the notations for the calculus, but more on the understandings of the difference of the calculus. In Newton's and the Leibniz era, it was well known that the method had been developed for calculating the tangent of a curve to find the maxima and the minima of a curve using the differential calculus and to calculate the area on the curve for the integral calculus. And it is also well known the differential and the integral calculus would be reverse calculations but the development was only for some simple curves. For instance, for the curve y equaling a x power of m, here m is an integer. The main problems for Newton and Leibniz were to find the method for more complicated curve, such as y equaling a x power of m but here m is the fraction, or the function is more complicated. Newton developed his calculus mainly as a tool for solving the dynamic problems such as the length, velocity, and acceleration, as well as the common problem mentioned here. Thus, he took the variables as the flowing quantities, named as the fluids, and the differential of y with regard to x would be given as the differential of y with regard to time t, divided by the differential of x with regard to time t. It would be given as y dot divided by x dot. In comparison, Leibniz developed his calculus mainly for the general problems, and he put a lot of the effort for developing the notations for calculus. The notations we are using in calculus today are those designed by Leibniz. He simply gave the derivative of y with regard to x as dy divided by dx. Principally, there are no significant difference between Newton's differential calculus and the Leibniz differential calculus, although the different rotations and today both Newton's and Leibniz notations are used. The large differences are on the integral calculus between Newton's calculus and Leibniz calculus. For instance, Newton used a rectangular box to indicate the integral, while Leibniz used an elongated S as the integral sign, which stands for sum at this. 
So if we look at the problem for calculating the area on the curve y equaling fx, now we have the expression as s equaling to the integral on y from a to b. Obviously, Nebner's notation on integral calculus is the one we are using today. In Newton's integral calculus, his binomial series and his quadratural rules were developed for the integral for more complicated functions. And the Nebles developed his transmutation theorem for the same purpose. And we will see the difference in the following slides. The example would be a quadrant of a circle of radius 1.0. And the circle is centered at x equaling to 1 and y equaling to 0. A layout Leibniz set up for solving the integral problem. Since the radius of the circle is 1, thus the area of the quadrant would be 1 quarter of pi given as this integral. Based on the equation of the circle, we can obtain y as a function of x given here. Thus, the target integral would be given by this expression. And uh, we can see the problem here. The integrand is the square root of a function 2x minus x squared. The integrand is not a simple function. Thus, there was no method for both Newton and Leibniz to find the direct integration. Instead, they developed different methods for solving such a problem. And uh, we will see for the very problem, they could obtain different series for pi. We first look at the Newton's method. For Newton's method, we can use the binomial series to extend the binomial function in the integrand. Here, we can write the integrand as the form as this. And uh, this part, we can use this binomial function to extend the binomial function into the binomial series. Here, q equaling to minus x divided by 2 and uh, m equaling to 1, n equaling to 2. Based on the Newton's binomial series, we can easily expand the binomial function into the infinite series given as this expression. In the step 2, we can time the powers of x together for this part. So the integrand of the integral would be given as this expression. And we can see all the terms in the brackets are the simple functions of x according to Newton's quadratural rules. And in the step 3, we put all this together. We have an integral as this. And uh, again, according to Newton's quadratural rules, for this integral of infinite series, we can integrate each term respectively. And uh, we have the result for the quarter of pi given by a series as this. And this infinite series converges quite quick. If we look at the result, we can see by the third term, we can obtain the first decimal for pi. And the second decimal at the first term. And the third decimal at the sixth term. 
Now we look at the neighbor's method. In the step one, we transform the variable from y to z, given as this according to Leibniz transmutation theorem. For the layout of the quadrant, we could calculate the differential dy over dx, given as this. And uh, we can obtain the z as a function of x. Here, z would be the distance on y when the tangent line t are crossing the y-axis. So z is given by this distance. In the step 2, for the Leibniz calculus, the integral transform can be given as this. And uh, for this example, we could have the expression as this. Therefore, we can obtain the integral transform from the integral on y to the integral on z. And if we put the expression of z into the integral, and we have the expression given as this. So, if we compare the original integral, we can see after the integral transform is the Leibniz transmutation, we can't see the advantage here. It seems the new integral is more complicated than the original integral if we compare this and this. In the step 3, Leibniz made a further integral transform. What he did is, based on the function z as a function of x, we can obtain a relation between x and z. x is a function of z. And uh, here we can check if x equaling to 0, z equaling to 0. And if x equaling to 1, z would be 1. As such, Leibniz made another integral transform given as this. The integral on the left-hand side is actually the shaded area in this plot. And the 1 is actually the area of the square. See this. And the last integral is the area of the white. So physically, we can see this are correct since the shaded area can be calculated by the area of the square minus the area of the white. And uh, we can substitute x into the integral here. So we have the expression of the integral as this. Now we can see here the integral can be expanded as this infinite series. As such, the complicated integral can be simplified as into the series of a simple function. In the step 4, we put all this together. We have the expression as this. And obviously, we can easily integrate each term in this integral. Thus, we obtain an infinite series for the quad pi as this. This is the famous Leibniz series for pi. In this slide, a summary of the result of Newton's calculus and Leibniz calculus is given. From the Newton's method, we can obtain an infinite series for the quad pi given as this. 
and uh, based on the Leibniz method, the quarter pi would be given by a much simpler infinite series as this. However, if we examine the convergence of the infinite series, the first series would be much faster. We can see from the result the first decimal can be produced by the third term and the second decimal by the fourth term and the third decimal by the sixth term. But for the Leibniz series, it converges very slowly. The first decimal can be only produced at the 25th term and the second decimal can be decided at the 627th term. From the example, we can see two different series for pi use the Newton's calculus and the Leibniz calculus. But both are correct.